All right, good morning. Uh, welcome to obviously exactly what everyone wants to do on a Friday morning. Um, this is our second day of the Every 15 Minutes program. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to take time to thank the school district and especially the high school administration uh, for all the continued support allowing us to do this um, every other year since 2008. Mr. Geyer, Officer Herneisen, uh, Mrs. Calhoun, Mrs. Petrie, uh, Mike Steffi, and myself started playing this back in August, September. Um, over the course of the year, we've had help from Mr. Miller, Ms. Badorf, Mr. Rouse, Mrs. McComsey, and Mrs. Weicker, as many others have also helped. A uh, special shout out to Mr. Bischoff, and especially Alex Zergod, Caden Byer, and Noah Woods. The video that you guys just watched was 100% produced by them. The script was written by them. They, as soon as the accident scene was done, they went and they were up in the studio editing. So those three guys, I do want to give a round of applause to those guys because they did a job. Besides everyone I just mentioned, um, Effort Area Education Foundation, Effort Community Church, Karis Insurance, and Berlanco Insurance are a huge help. They are our program sponsors. Without them, we couldn't really do a lot of this because they cover all financial needs, so the school district does not actually have to put anything out. Um, we have many community uh, partners, Effort Police Department, Effort Ambulance, Pioneer Lincoln, Akron Fire Companies, Wellspan Effort Community Hospital, Valley View Auto Center, Stradling Funeral Homes, TNT Youth Ministries, and then obviously we had the, the helicopter from Well Flight come back. Um, it was the first time since 2010 that we had the helicopter included, and that literally just came about within the last week or so. So that was a pretty cool experience, I think, seeing the helicopter fly in. So um, not every year that happens, so you guys were uh, privileged to see that. There are plenty of others I've missed, I'm sure. Um, I also want to thank all you students, obviously, for the attendance during this program. Um, it's a rather serious thing. Um, so what is every 15 minutes? The program started back in the 80s. Um, it is a national recognized program. You know, a lot of schools around prom, they will put out just crash cars on the way to an accident scene. We are the only school in the county that does the full program. Um, it, the number has changed over the years. I actually helped with one in college when it was every 32 minutes, but to be able to be a nationally recognized program, they ran with every 15 minutes and it stuck. Um, for the last, I'm not sure how many years, but it is um, obviously a two-day event, you know, so we, we go we go all out here. Um, it's been a very emotional day, well, two days for these guys. I think I was trying to prep them the last couple of weeks, months, and I think they all realized last night exactly why. So the premise is every 15 minutes someone in the U.S. is killed or seriously injured in a, an alcohol or drug-related crash or distractor-related crash. Now, obviously, time is actually, uh, constantly changing, but the point is not. So, we, like I said, we incorporated distracted driving because we all realize that everyone in this room is probably guilty of doing that at least once. So we need to be more aware of things when we're using GPS, texting, Snap, TikTok, whatever things you guys are doing. So we're not all here, obviously, for the negatives, but you know, so often we have this, well, this is not going to happen to me approach. But we all realize that that's not the case. We realize that we're never going to 100% prevent the decisions you guys make, but ultimately, we hope that we impact at least one person. If one person second guesses himself and does not get behind the wheel, then we realize that we've accomplished our mission. That we want more than one person, but saving one life is a start. Your decisions not only impact yourselves, they impact everyone else on the road, but more importantly, they impact everybody in this room, friends, families, this is year 19 for me at Ephraim. So I did the rough math, and I think I've had over 5,000 students coming through my classes. Do you, for you guys to think that you guys do not have an impact on myself, any other teacher, anyone else that works in this building, it's not accurate whatsoever. You know, there are times I run into students that I haven't had in 10 plus years. I might not remember their names because there's been so many of them. But I always remember faces, but I also remember stories. The stories that we want to remember are the positive ones, the, the laughs, the good memories, the ones that we never forget are the bad ones, the losing students before their time. Those are not the good moments when we experience that. So that the whole point of this, again, is be smart with our decisions. All right, we want, we want those good memories. 
You matter not only to your families, but each and every person in this room. Now, we do have a special speaker here to start. Um, since our inception in 2008, he has generously spoken at every one of these uh, assemblies. He's currently the superintendent at Manham Central High School. But more importantly, as you will see when he steps on stage, probably wearing a purple and gold, he is an alumni of Effort High School. So he's going to talk about his experiences. So at this time, please welcome Dr. Ryan Axe. basketball team. 
So if you can imagine a senior, a senior in high school, my entire family went on the away bus to away games. I couldn't get away. You know, as a senior, you don't always want to be around your parents, and they're all on the bus, including my little brother. Uh, my brother was an, an outstanding athlete, an artist here at Ephrata. He ran track. Uh, his senior year, he went out for baseball. He played when he was in middle school and ended up batting over 500 his senior year and being an all-league player. Basketball was his main sport. Uh, he, he was a starter. He was an all-star. Uh, he was the Ephrata Review Athlete of the Year his senior year here at Ephrata and had a bright future ahead of him. He went to Randolph-Macon College to play basketball. It's down in Ashland, Virginia. Scored over 1,500 points. Had a couple opportunities to play professionally overseas. Uh, and all of that, you know, I'm, not, I'm only 5'9", but he was only 5'7", and did all of that. Uh, so people that are in here remember uh, how talented he was. But he had a really bright future ahead of him. Graduated from college, came home, was home for about a year. Uh, got engaged to a, a young lady named Julie, uh, and then everything kind of turned. And I have to share, like I had such a blessed, amazing life until until August uh, 12, 1997. So what happened that night? Um, he called me. You know, I lived in Lidditz at the time. I was a teacher at Cacalico back then. I was an English teacher and basketball coach. Uh, and he called me and said, hey, Julie and I are going out in Lancaster. Do you want to meet us out? It was a weeknight. Uh, so, you know, I, I was like, ah, I'm good for, you know, I'm good. I'll, I'll catch you later. And uh, hung up the phone, obviously before cell phones. But I didn't know that that was going to be the last time I ever talked to my brother. <clears throat> and this is where this gets tough, so just bear with me. So at that time, in the 90s, you know, we didn't have the cell phones, so at like 4 in the morning, I'm in bed and I hear <clears throat> my dad's voice on the voicemail. He's like, Ryan, you got to call me as soon as you get this. So that made me, like, I shot up and, uh, I, you know, I'm talking, I call him and he said, Kurt was in an accident and he didn't make it. And he said, Julie didn't either. So... I get to the house, and uh, what happened was they were out, had, had a bunch of drinks. Um, she was driving. I'm not blaming her because he chose to get in the car with her, and if he would have been driving, I don't know what would have happened either. Uh, but they were coming home, apparently going too fast, and the, on the way home from Lancaster, if you think about the Oregon Pike exit, there's a guardrail. It's the only guardrail, like, in miles, and somehow... She veered into the guardrail. She was thrown from the car and hit by a truck coming the other way. And the car flipped and landed on top of Kurt. And that was it. Um, so <clears throat> the next day was a blur. I, I don't remember much about that time. Um, Kurt was my best friend. You know, we were only a couple years apart. And you know, by noon the next day, this all goes really fast, and it's hard for people to understand. I think the video captures it pretty well, but uh, by the next afternoon, I, I was at Stradlin Funeral Homes picking out a casket for my best friend. Uh, and my parents were too broken to go, so I had to take that on, you know, with my two uncles. At one point, I asked Mr. Stradling if I could see my brother, and he said, you don't want to see him. And I, I and my uncles had to hold me back from trying to get into the basement. <clears throat> um, but he, Mr. Stratton just kept saying, you don't want to see him like this. So we got a bunch of phone calls. The newspaper, like at that time, without social media, like the Lancaster newspaper was knocking on my parents' door at 2 in the afternoon the day after the accident, wanting quotes from my parents and wanting to find out information. Can we have a picture? And it was just all so overwhelming. Um, one blessing, though, I will say, and again, this is a credit to this community, is the support from the African community was unbelievable. Um, and I don't even know if I would have made it without the, the support of the community at that time. Um, but it, it changes everything. Like, uh, my life changed drastically, and as a teacher, 
I, I wasn't smiling much, I wasn't sleeping, I actually moved away from Lidditz to Reading just to get away from everybody, which probably wasn't healthy. Um, and I remember a teacher across the hall from me at Cacalico, she came to, uh, across the hall to me a couple months after the accident because school started two weeks after this accident. And about three or four months into the school year, she said, Ryan, are you ever going to smile again? <clears throat> Since then, there's been a lot of really neat things that have kept my brother's memory alive. Uh, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame here and at Randolph-Macon. Uh, the problem with that is, though, is like our family had to accept those honors. Those are supposed to be for him. I mean, it was, honor, it was an honor for me to stand there and hold the plaque, but I, I didn't earn it. And he wasn't there to, to have that happen. Um, even at Randolph-Macon today, they have a, they run a leadership workshop in his name for their college athletes that I get to go to every year and speak. And that's great, but he's still not here. Uh, even though he's impacting young adults even today, uh, I don't get to see him anymore. And none of that brings him back. And that's where, when you're making choices, you have to think about that. Like, you're gonna hear letters today, and you're gonna be thinking about memories in your own lives and all the people that care about you, and none of it brings him back. <clears throat> to this day, it hurts. I notice he's gone at holidays. Anytime I walk into a gym, uh, him and I love basketball. Um, I can't, I always, every gym I've ever walked in, I think about it. When Central plays Ephra, and I walk into the gym, the first thing I think about is my brother. Um, my mom's never been the same. Uh, it, it just impacts parents even, probably even more than siblings, but she's never been the same person, and I can't even explain that to my own kids and my wife because they don't know her other than after the accident. My dad battled cancer and, and fought really hard, and we lost him, and I had to do all that without my brother. And he's gone too, and um, all the blessings in my life have been missed by him since 1997. This year he would have been 50 years old, uh, which is crazy to me to think about because I only think about him as t at 24. But instead of me getting to celebrate his 50th birthday, he, he's buried up, if you know where Mount Zion Church is in Akron, at the top of the hill above the park, that's where he's buried. And I'll probably go there after this today, <clears throat> just to check in. <clears throat> Sometimes life happens, and I know his spirit's still with us. Uh, something cool that happened two months ago is uh, Caden Landis' little brother is at Clay Elementary School. And when all this happened, a lot of people donated basketball books <clears throat> to, the, to all the libraries in Ephra uh, in my brother's name. And his little brother, Caden's little brother, signed a book out, and the inside of the cover had a, a thing written in honor of my brother. So even here at Ephrata, even though you don't know it, you're still helping keep the spirit alive, which I greatly appreciate. He just hasn't been part of our, my journey, my career path, my friends um, have, and I, I can't share with him. Like, he's never met my wife. Uh, he's never met my kids. <clears throat> and all that, like, I'd love to tell him about so many things I'm, I'm blessed with. Sometimes it makes me really angry at him um, because of the choice that he made. Sometimes it makes me sad, but mostly now it's, it's good memories because of even things like this. It's hard to recover. Uh, I'm still going through grief on occasion. Fortunately, I met my wife, and she really pulled me out of it. She brought me back to Lancaster County uh, when I moved away and and I was able to like share his, I was able to share him with her, but again, like I would have rather had him get to meet her. So the message here obviously is all the adults here know how this, this is a hard time to be a kid. Uh, as a superintendent, I see it all the time. The pressure on all of you is way different than the pictures you're seeing when I grew up. And I understand that, but if you're taking these chances or other types of chances, whether it's drinking and driving, binge drinking, THC vapes, I mean, 
the amount of vapes we take off kids at Manheim Central just makes me so angry. And I know that's going on everywhere. Um, you're disregarding what your loved ones are going to go through. If you're making choices that could end it all, you're not thinking about what other what your family is going to go through. I'm telling you, I'm 52 years old. My brother would have been 50. This happened in 97, and I'm still up here fighting back crying. That's how it is. That's what it is, and that's how it feels. Some of you are out there, and I heard Mr. Clare say it earlier, it's not going to happen to me. He also referenced when we were in high school, they always put that crashed car out front. Kurt saw that. He saw that crashed car. He heard the message. Not, to the, not as powerful as these messages are going to be today, but he heard the message, and it still happened. And he wasn't, he wasn't an alcoholic. He didn't drink all the time. It was one bad choice one night. So other things to think about, if your parents are the ones that allow you to do this type of thing, or they have, give you access to any of the things I mentioned earlier, or they say, oh yeah, if you're here and you don't drive anywhere, it's cool, I'm cool, they're not understanding that they're setting you up for failure down the road, because they're not always going to be there to protect you. And I just think that's garbage, that the families that do that. And I understand that no one's perfect, and I'm not sharing any of this because I want any of your pity or anything like that. I know everyone's got it tough, but every choice matters. So if you're struggling, what I'm going to encourage you to do, if you're struggling with anything, whether it's an addiction, choices you're making, struggles like how you're feeling, tell someone so they can help you. Whether it's a friend, a teacher you trust, uh, an adult in your life, someone tell them so that you can get help. Because I don't want any of your families to go through uh, anything that we went through. So my final thought for all of you, you've all seen my family. Kurt never did. Think of that before you do anything, and maybe your family won't have to live with this type of pain. If one life is saved by the message today, this message today, I know Kurt would think it was worth it, and all the people that love you would too. Thank you. So, whoa. So, a couple things. Um, up on stage yesterday was the first thing you did when we took care of you in the 116 was the first thing that happened they lost these things so if you were trying to text them yesterday there's a reason why they didn't respond we were at refreshing mountain and we truly wanted to be isolated we wanted the experience of just having this group together and you know we did some team building we had a guest speaker I think at that moment they all emotionally realized that the impact of yesterday um, and I was one of the things I was preparing for the most difficult part is the letter writing uh, procedure that we do now if you took one of the pamphlets you, you saw the inside of how the letter starts and that's what they were tasked to do they were writing letters to family friends you know quite a few uh, different individuals so it was all based off of every 15 minutes somebody's killed or seriously injured in, in drinking driving distracted or leaving where they crash Today I died and I never got a chance to tell you. And then they just, they went from there. So we have a couple volunteers that are going to read their letters to you guys. So the first person I'm gonna call up is Alyssa. Friendship or relationship 
15 hours apart or 10 minutes apart, you never left me alone. Well, friendships have hard spots, you and I never didn't come back from them. I can't believe you'll never get to be Aunt Izzy to my kids, or that you won't see me marry the one person you've known would be my future husband for the last four years, or that we won't be giving your mom any more gray hairs from the dumb decisions that we make. My biggest regret in life, and I relive it every day, is the day that I woke up to the vibration of my phone at four in the morning and it was you. You had told me that your car flipped, and you were submerged and you had to be pulled from the car under the water. Even though your accident wasn't substance related, it still could have resulted in the same outcome. If I could go back to the day before to stop you, I would. That will forever be the scariest moment of my life because even though you were okay and talking to me, my mind ran to every possible worst outcome and I would have never forgave myself if it happened to you. My biggest regret in life is not being there sooner that day because I don't know what I would have done without you if I lost you. I never forget the day my dad took us to round one for your birthday and we did donuts while it was snowing in the parking lot. Most of my best memories from my life involve you and I don't think I would have even made it this far without you by my side. I always have I always have been and will continue to be your biggest supporter. I truly wish I would have gotten to tell you while I could that you would forever be my favorite part of living. It made every day easier knowing I had you to turn to and lean on. I wish I could go back and hug you one last time while watching you drink Diet Coke and hearing your laugh. I'm sorry that I won't be there to make your wedding the time of your life with the most bomb speech ever. I'm so grateful for all of the time and memories that you gave me before my time came, but I'm beyond devastated that our story is over. Don't ever change who you are for anybody because nobody deserves a heart like yours anyway. Thank you for being my best friend. Thank you for being my rock. Thank you for being my biggest supporter. Thank you for following my dumb ideas. Thank you for encouraging my delusion. Thank you for showing me what true friendship is. Thank you for always encouraging me. Thank you for always having my back. Thank you for letting me live the best teenage years. Thank you for always reminding me to never regret my decisions. Thank you for never letting me live a dull moment and always keeping me on my toes. I couldn't have asked for a better best friend to go through high school with. Thank you for making my time memorable and please never let my name be forgotten. I love you so much more than you will ever understand and I'm so sorry I didn't get the chance to live it through. I hope you find somebody to love you as I did even though I don't think it's possible. Continue to live your life to the fullest and never let a day go bare. I know sunsets are your favorite thing, so for now, look for me and then because I will never let one go unfinished. I love you forever, Isabella Grace, and never forget it. So now we're going to call Isabella up to read her letter. Looking back, 
to my biggest regret is ever letting you go. All the stupid fights mean nothing when I think about how pure our friendship was. I will always remember the side of me that only you could bring out. I could always be myself around you knowing you aren't judging me because you are acting just as dumb. I will cherish every memory we've made together from running to Turkey Hill at 3 a.m. just because we wanted slushies and ice cream to you flying halfway across the country to surprise me when I needed you the most. It never mattered what we did, we just enjoyed each other's company. It's weird to think that there won't be any more memories being made. You won't be at my wedding, you won't get to meet my kids, and they'll only ever hear the crazy stories, see the pictures, and watch all of our vlogs from over the years. You were always my biggest supporter in everything I did, even if it meant moving over a thousand miles away. You always wanted what was best for me. You lit up any room you walked in and made new friends everywhere you went. You were always down for new experiences and loved trying new things, even if it was out of your comfort zone. Unless it was food because you only ate chicken tenders or french fries with cold shredded cheddar cheese, and if it was warm, you'd ask for another one that was cold. You knew me better than anyone I've ever met. You knew every little detail about me that I didn't think anyone could notice, and I hope you know I noticed those things about you too. You had such a big heart that made it so easy to love you and even harder to let you go. There's not going to be a day that goes by that I won't think about you and where you could be in life. You had so much life left and so many goals you'll never get to accomplish. I'm going to miss hearing all your crazy stories about people I don't, don't even know, and I'll even miss you trying to teach me line dances even though you knew I wasn't coordinated enough to do any of them. I wish you knew how proud I am of you. Even with everything going on in your life, you never failed to be there for everyone else, even if they wouldn't have done the same for you. There's so many things I've taken for granted because I never thought this day would come, and there's so many days I wish I could relive with you still here. You've saved my life so many times, I just wish I could have saved yours this one time. Even though you're not physically here anymore, you'll always be my best friend because no amount of distance can tear our souls apart. I love and miss you always and forever.
Corey, and the one that made me a mother. I hope I told you enough that you were more than I could have ever hoped for or dreamed of. I remember dreaming of what life would be like with you before I even met you. When you entered our world, I prayed that I would never have to say goodbye to you. That has always been my worst nightmare. Now here we are. I want you to know that you are my best friend. We had so many adventures together and so many to come. We were planning our trip to Europe next summer after you graduate. You had big plans for life. And we're going to conquer the world with I, with your I do it myself attitude. I love that about you. Nothing was going to stop you. Your dad and I were so excited for next year when you graduate and which college you would pick. I loved dreaming with you during each of your college visits. I knew it would be challenging, but I knew that you would become a physician's assistant just as you dreamed. You would have touched so many lives and changed the world. As I would watch you living your best life, coming and going in your car, I hoped and prayed that you would that you were as indestructible as you thought you were. This is not how it's supposed to be. Someday I was going to see you walk down the aisle on the arm of your dad to marry your best friend. We were robbed of seeing you becoming a mother someday. I wanted more time with you, more hearing all about that God was doing in your life and the adventures of you and your friends. I love shopping with you and spending time with you. What I would give to watch you water ski one more time. It was amazing and breathtaking as you would put every ounce of energy and strength into every turn and move as if you were conquering the water and shattering any physical restraints. Your friends were robbed all too soon of that beautiful smile, listening ear, fun-loving attitude, and all that you had to offer. You brought so much beauty to the world through your heart and creativity. You were so gifted in that way. You had such, you also had a strong faith in God and strive to serve him. For now, I will cherish every single memory that I have, was blessed to have with you. You were truly a gift alone from God to us. I know that you're safe in God's arms and I cannot wait to see you again.
whether good or bad, the decisions that you make have a huge impact not only on you, but the people you love. We all make decisions for various reasons, whether it be out of fear, acceptance, selfish, or unselfish reasons. Has anyone ever been too scared to make a decision? Yeah, sometimes I'm guilty of that. Guess what? That's still a decision. So my challenge to you today is to take chances, but take the right chances. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that drugs or alcohol will help out in any way. Don't fall into the trap of hearing that text message come through when you just have to look at it. It can wait. You are, your life is more important than any of those things. Lastly, don't fall into the trap of not taking good chances out of fear or self-doubt or possible embarrassment. Newsflash, you will be embarrassed at some time in your life. Has anybody ever had this happen? You're just sitting there having a conversation and all of a sudden you choke on your own spit for no reason at all. And all of a sudden you're like gasping for air. And you're like, okay, that's embarrassing. Or if you're walking down the hall and you trip over nothing, just for some reason your foot doesn't get high enough and you look foolish going across the hallway. Well, I have a story. Uh, it was, uh, I was probably about you guys' age. And I was on the very first dates with a girl I really liked. She suggested that I go to the farm show because I hadn't been there before. Well, things were going really smoothly. And, and we walked around looking at all the animals and taking in up everything. Until it came across the rabbits. I remember thinking, now is a good time to show my sensitive side to this, sensitive side to this lady and point out all these cute rabbits. So back then they would stack the rabbit cages up to about high, high level, by eye level. Anyway, as I walked up to the cute, furry, floppy-eared rabbits, and it was pointing out how cute they were, suddenly this evil rabbit spun around, and I found out quickly that rabbits can pee a lot. <laughs> this thing peed all over my face, <laughs> and of course, it got me right in the middle of talking, so I got in my mouth. <laughs> The look at my date's face was an utter disgust and amusement at the same time. Needless to say, I didn't get a good night kiss that night. But I did end up getting the girl, and we've been married for 24 years. Oh yeah! You may have heard this before, but I think this is so good. In the Far East, they have something that's called the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to start growing out of the ground. They have to water it, fertilize it, where it is, and, and it doesn't break down ground until the fifth year. But once it breaks through the, through the ground, within five weeks, it grows 90 feet tall. Now the question is, does it grow 90 feet tall in five weeks or in five years? The answer is obvious. It grows 90 feet tall in five years, because at any time, if that person stopped watering, nurturing, and fertilizing that tree, the bamboo tree would have died in the ground. You see, you have dreams, and you'll have dreams, and it's going to be tempting to quit in those dreams when things don't, you don't get instant results. You have got to keep watering, nurturing, and fertilizing that dream. It's not going to happen as quickly as you, as you want it to happen, and a lot of things will happen along the way that, that will catch you off guard. You gotta keep moving and plugging away. During those time, hard times when things get tough, and you fail, and things didn't work out, you have to remember, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. You see, when it's difficult and there's a struggle, that you become, that what you become in the process is more important than the dream itself. That's far more important. The person you become, the character you build, and, and the courage that you develop, that's what you want to carry along with you as you move forward. The last 16 to 18 years, depending on how, how old you are, your parents, grandparents, teachers, Principals, guidance counselors, resource officers have been watering, fertilizing, and nurturing a dream, and that dream is you. They have spent countless hours making sure you're healthy, cared for, learning, setting up for success, setting you up for success, and they want what's best for you. And the last thing they want to see is that dream get buried and destroyed by a bad decision. So go, take good chances, and grow it like the bamboo, the Chinese bamboo tree.
do have one challenge for everybody. It kind of echoes what Mike said about looking at your neighbor, tell them how important they are. Good. When you guys get home, hug your family members. I know it's not cool when you're in high school to hug your mom and dad, tell them you love them. But yeah, you, yeah. Coming from a parent, it means a lot when you guys do that. So when you guys do that, when you guys get home, don't be afraid to give your parents a hug. Maybe a little kiss on the cheek and tell them thank you for everything you've done. This time I do want to turn over to Dr. Gale before you guys are going to be released.
you hear it a thousand times, you know, making good choices, it's incredibly important. Um, and there are times when sometimes you're with someone else who's making a bad choice. From my perspective, if you either don't intervene or don't say no, you're kind of condoning that behavior. Not everybody sees it that way, but if you see someone going down a bad path and you let it happen, you're kind of giving them license and saying, I, I agree with you. You can say, not for me, and that's true. I'd rather have you step up and help them too. Yeah, you helped yourself by not going with them or getting in the car and participating, but ultimately, you're not showing you really care with them if you don't intervene to some degree. That's, again, my perspective, and I know a lot of people don't agree with that. Um, but please be there for, you know, number one for yourself, but also for other people. You know, take care of one another. Um, and from the letters and the experiences, we have issues. Wherever there are two people, there are going to be conflict, eventually. The two people who love each other the most, I, my 30th anniversary is coming up in just over a month. I had lots of conflicts with that lady named Anya. Okay? She's a wonderful lady, but I'm a jerk at times, so she, well, I was glad she was with me. Um, you know, so no matter how much you love someone, if you, if you spend time with them, there's going to be conflict, no matter how great they are. And working through that conflict and you know, being forgiving and giving them a hug, uh, those are the things, hopefully you'll never have to deal with the loss of a loved one in, in the same way that I have in some instances. But ultimately, reminding them of things that you really care about and uh, sharing those, those things with one another. Uh, that's what I want to say this morning. So thank you guys for your attention. Thank you. Thanks to the uh, crew and all that to the audience.